not prepared yet. You need to try and pick off the units as well. Look at the shields on the Mark Oh my god, the bro! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for another matchup in the IPL Season 2. This time we're in the Losers Round 2. So everything is on the line. A do-or-die situation as one of these players will be going home tonight. We've got Fnatic Phoenix spawning in the southeast position as the Blue Terran. And tonight he is going up against Six Jacks Coco, who is spawning as the Orange Terran in the Northwest. Now, something very interesting about these two players that we should certainly address as the game gets started here. Uh, both these players are former Brood War players. One of them having a little bit more success than the other, and that would be Six Jacks Coco. He actually has a history, believe it or not, with Day 9. Uh, the same year that Day 9... Um, qualified for the WCG Grand Finals. It was Coco who was also representing alongside him. That was, I believe, for the United States. And then he also represented Panama in like 2008, 2009, and, uh, and in 2010. So a lot of Brood War blood flowing through these two players. And I have, I, I have actually seen Coco play a few games, but there's no doubt that this man over here, Fnatic Phoenix, has certainly made a huge name for himself when it comes to StarCraft II. And I'm going to tell you why I love Phoenix so much. It's because the guy likes aggression. And we see this style of player come out every so often where they really sort of tailor their game around the aggression uh, that you can apply to your opponent. Now, in TVT, which, of course, is this matchup we've got here, that can be a little bit uh, difficult. Uh, it's just kind of the way that the, the matchup plays out. But that kind of never stopped Phoenix, and that's really why I like to watch him as a player. So we've got our old-school Brood War Pro from the United States and Panama, Coco from Six Jacks, going up against Fnatic Phoenix, where one of these players will go home. And even more kind of interesting to add to the story of, of how this is all unfolding, the first Marine out will get that SCV out of there from Phoenix. So the SCV traveling back down the ramp, he is going to quickly, quickly get away so we got uh, phoenix now on the other side looking for hit coco's svcv and he will find it will he be able to kill it uh, doesn't look like he's going to kill that scv um and i was going on about brood war uh about these two players and what we we may see uh, coco is going to th be throwing down his uh expansion at the low ground so Command Center goes up. Maybe it's going to be Coco with the aggression to start off here. He'll catch one Marine from Phoenix over on the side. In comes another from the back. And these two will fire away as one Marine does go down. And the other two will run away to tell the tale back inside their base. I've got to, got to ask myself, where are these two, though? Seeing that Command Center go down. We have the factory nearly completed here for Phoenix with the reactor going up there. Possibly just a very, very quick Marine tank push. The command center is being built. While we have more Marines coming out of just the single racks up here, there are a few more, and double gas is up for Coco right now. Just looking back as uh, Phoenix is going to have that reactor finish. And he's going to bring out a Hellion first, and uh, maybe he will. He's only on one gas. Uh, we'll have to see what happens after this Hellion comes out. There the second refinery does go down. And these players certainly taking a different tech path at the moment. Bunker is being placed for Coco at his front. Just a little bit added defense. And just now the factory for Coco is halfway done building. So the starport will finish even before then. We're going to have, is Hellion number two going to come out? Uh, no, it looks like a tech lab's going to go down there. And a second tech lab on the starport. So he could decide. We've seen this from Terrans before. Uh, I think we might see it here is some Marines. The Hellions can do some initial damage, as we kind of see here. Of course, the Marines in this bunker do ward that Hellion away. Uh, and then we have several Marines... 
and possibly a banshee and there's the banshee coming out now you get two or three of those and suddenly they become a really big threat and the other Terran player has to decide you know what are they focusing down what are they building maybe to combat that taking a look on the other side as we see a scan finishing up there for Phoenix we see his starport going up and a second Rax as well so while he doesn't go for the reactor on the Rax he just decides to build a second one first tank coming out no siege mode as of yet but additionally we're seeing blue flame come out now, only the one tank. No, he didn't. Did he? Uh, he must have canceled the tank. No, he didn't. It was just the tech lab. I'm just being an idiot. So, just going to be the Hellion with the blue flame. No tank at all. And it is a smarter move in terms of gas because the Hellions are mineral only. So, we're going to have this uh, medevac coming out. Hellions uh, making their way back over to Coco's base. He's got his first tank out. A few more Marines out. He's getting a Viking, which is a great decision here in this uh, particular situation. Considering that Phoenix does not have Cloak at the moment, I doubt that uh, he's going to get it. But Phoenix is kind of crazy like that. I really like the way that he plays his style. Again, you know, just something to, uh, something to keep in mind. We have the first Viking spotting several Hellions there as they continue to scout around the map. We've got this Banshee now actually switching positions, going to the southwest and then making its way over to the natural. And all the Marines have pretty much uh, gone. They're expecting something to happen over here with the missile turret. And there it is. We will see the Banshee start to do some damage. Four Marines are going to come over. Again, there is no cloak right now, but he will pick off a couple of Marines right here. He cannot fight all of them. He might even be able to get this SCV on the missile turret, but he will just back off. And so Phoenix will cower away. And I actually think that was a smart move to go ahead and cower away. Another Viking. Same Viking, actually, from Coco. Going to get spotted by some Marines. Thought he might land and do some damage. Not being controlled at all by Coco. In fact, he is just letting this happen. And that would be because these Hellions have made their way into the main base. I was trying to figure out. Obviously, he wasn't controlling it for a reason. And I have <laughs> horrible mouse issues. <laughs> and what do we see? We see all the SCVs run away. Uh, but that's pretty much going to be it. So not a whole lot of damage uh, being done. Do we have more harassment happening, though? As the Banshee comes back in, it does get the SCVs off of the gas. Banshee will try to micro its way to a Marine victory. One hurt there a little bit. Several hurt. It's the medevac on its way back home. And that Banshee... Uh-oh, uh-oh. The Viking is on the prowl. Predator prey right here, as you think you know which one's the predator. And the Banshee just sits idle. Will the Viking go back over? Maybe he'll take a more sharp path. I think he's going to see it. There it is. Boom, and that Banshee will go down. Meanwhile, just the missile turret here, because taking a look at Coco's base and considering uh, what sort of um, defense he has right now. Two Vikings now out for Phoenix. And... Coco going to mobilize several Marines, four tanks, has the Viking out and the single medevac. Will be spotted by these Marines at the tower. However, we see the Vikings of Phoenix killing the Viking of his opponent. That means he'll lose some spotting on that one. Stim is halfway done for both players. Marines and Hellions kind of spread around the map. This Marine it will be taken out. He might be trapped, however. I really like the getting the two Marines there just to make sure if he throws the one there at the Zelnaga Tower that he'll be able to defeat it and keep vision. Important to keep vision. Okay, Hellion's moving out. Will they try to bypass this army? He'll actually see them. He chases away one Marine with the blue flame. He'll go ahead and roast him. No problem. Now, what kind of a force does Phoenix have back at his base? Four tanks, a half-loaded bunker, and a few Marines coming out. Just showing a little bit that he has this. Uh, oh, Hellions! Hellions! Getting hit by the tanks. Unfortunately, they have trapped themselves inside. There's not a medevac in sight. Oh, and that one tank could just actually clean all these back up he scans to determine if there is a third base down the answer is no the hellions do manage to slip through and what will he have to defend this back home there's only three marines the bunker is there he'll check for coco's third 
Will Coco load up and possibly try some sort of a cliff assault? There are some siege tanks. Let's just take a look at the vision here. They'll uh, just supply some vision as the siege tanks stay on the bottom, but those Marines are getting tore apart. And with the Vikings out, we'll see limited vision come out for these siege tanks, and then he, we could see Phoenix just move out with his tanks and these Marines and take care of business here. There's only a few Marines left. They are still shelling the top with the assistance of these scans. And there's another scan going down. Phoenix thinking it's going to be okay to go ahead and react and move in, unsieges, and heads over towards the cliff. However, the second scan does go down. And will a third scan? Yes, the third scan goes down. One tank, two tanks fall. And a perfect position here for Coco, especially considering that he does not have a whole lot of reinforcements here. So small engagements happening as now we'll see the reinforcements from Coco get hit head on by Phoenix. The tanks do siege up and he does have the advantage of having the medevacs there, but will it be enough taking some huge siege fire? All the Marines will go down, but there's only a few Marines left. In fact, one Marine left while these tanks are cleaned up. What was left from that battle was obviously uh, many, many more units here for Phoenix. We have another move for Coco. He's he's getting his third established right now with another missile turret going up. This third has been going for a little bit while these small skirmishes have taken place. The Hellions are still here as well. And don't forget that this might be a really sweet counterattack here on the third. So taking a look at the army supply right here, we do see Phoenix ahead just a little bit. But he does have air control. He's got more medevacs. Something that uh, he's done a good job eliminating here from Coco. And in come the Hellions once again. Marines will be the only thing there to deal with it. And no, we will have a tank in the siege line. Never mind. Uh, big. I wouldn't even say that was a blunder. He went in. Thought it might be a great opportunity. Here we have a loaded up medevac though. Oh, and he is spotted by the one missile turret. Unfortunately, the tanks... Will not be able to hit anything in the main base, but they are within reach of this third expansion. So he couldn't do the damage with the Hellion. And said he'll go ahead and decide to do it with the Siege Tanks. He's essentially going to lose this army here. The Submarines now making their way over. But he has made this an unmighty base. Meanwhile, we do have a drop at the third of Phoenix. All over the place right now. And it does look like this is going to go down. And quite a few SCVs uh, were lost in the exchange. Not uh, not all of them, but he did get the best of that. Still have the medevac over here spotting, but that has uh, also been cleaned up as well. The command center does go down. And Phoenix will uh, have to rebuild his third. So where it did look like Phoenix was going to be at a great advantage, Coco already having his third. This one is done, but we see no SCVs there at quite yet it's not an orbital either keep in mind this is an orbital we've got uh, another command center building this is an orbital here and will we have a skirmish in the middle another command center going down for phoenix really trying to catch up here and he's going to come in from the backside. the scan does go down to take out the front two tanks but phoenix does lose some pretty critical tanks However, he's got two over here, and that is the big distraction. He's going to try to go ahead, take out the rocks, and counter into the third, and he catches the tanks on the backside coming back from Coco, and he uh, makes that tank count completely uh, even now as just a few defensive tanks exist are left for Coco, and now that Phoenix has vision here, he'll be able to just shell this third base once again just out of range as Coco to these siege tanks. The lift and the move from Coco over to the more protected third. A single Hellion over here. Blue Flame. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. They're going to try to attack the Hellion. They do get a surround. They take it out. But again, more SCVs lost. These small moves from Phoenix seem to be giving him more and more of an advantage here. However, the uh, supply count right now still in favor of Phoenix. His upgrades are at one. Just plus one weapons on both uh, Mech and his bio. No upgrades right now for Coco. And we all know that that can make a huge difference as the game goes on longer and longer. Oh my gosh, ton of Marines are shelled on their way over to defend this base. It will fall. Mules will die. 
and all at the cost of a stim. So the medevacs get to work. There are a lot of tanks out right now for Coco. He is supply blocked. And he is going to scan, sees exactly what Phoenix has in store for him. There are a lot more units here for Phoenix. And he's going to go ahead and move into this. Not a wise decision, or will it be? These tanks have no ground support at all. And the Marines easily take them out. He does lose some Marines. So Phoenix banking on his reinforcements here to be able to assist in this battle. He takes the two tanks that were stationed at, uh, at the third here. There's another one up here as well. And he's going to go ahead and stim in. Oh, no. There's no siege for Coco. And he'll lose all of his tanks. And there it is. The GG as a simple mistake will cost Coco the game. Phoenix saw it. And just like, uh, you know, wild animal, he smelled blood. It was the shark in the water. He saw the moment of weakness and he attacked and Phoenix won the game because the tanks were not sieged. Some great positioning, some good drops, but a lot of action coming out from both of these players. Ultimately, Phoenix taking the lead here in this best of three series for the IPL season two losers round two. I'm DJ Week for OneMoreGame.tv and we'll be back for game number two.